up too much technique, you rot your brain. <laughs> it makes you confused. You get to a position and you go, uh, which one should I use? You should just go, oh, uh, here's my favorite. This is, and that comes in time. That comes in your time on the mat and you're rolling regularly and you have your moves called your go-tos. If you're a wrestler, what's your go-to? You're a wrestler. Ethan, you're a wrestler, right? What was your go-to for your, for your uh, wrestling? Well, huh? Low single. Who else wrestled? Raise your hand. What was your, what, what was that, duck under? Who else, anybody else? So your go-to is your move, your takedown. So now once you go side control, what's your go-to? You attack the arms, you attack the neck, do you attack the neck to get the arms? Or do you just take whatever they give you? Whatever they're giving you, you take it. That's another thing too. So the whole thing with jujitsu is based on opportunity and it's also based on mistakes. The guys that are more advanced will just wait and camp and, and just control and, and ride and flow and then they'll let you make a mistake and cross center line and they'll take your back. Or that you'll post and they'll take your arm. Or they'll bend their arms and they'll give you an arm. Or they'll go to belly down and they'll give you your neck. Or they'll leave their legs dangling around like this and they'll get leg locked. So the biggest thing is that you're moving and scrambling and moving. So Ethan, come here real quick, go down to the turtle and just just shadow wrestle a little bit. It doesn't have to be fast and hard, just go light. Just stuff like that. Jiu-Jitsu and wrestling should not be separate. It should be wrestling and jujitsu. No, it should be combined. Because when you're in a bad spot, you gotta scramble. So you're gonna use your wrestling. And then if you're in flat on your back and someone's on top, you're gonna have to use a shrimp or a hip escape. Everything should be mixed. When you're rolling, you're rolling, that's it. It's unfortunate in the beginning that you're not allowed to once, but because a lot of people don't have control, but there's no finger locks, there's no foot locks in the beginning. I think it all should be taught in the beginning. That way, by the time you, you're an advanced grappler, you've already had handfuls of all the stuff. It's gotta be taught with control though, like neck cranks, toe holds, heel hooks, ankle locks, knee bars, arm bars, bent arm bars, chokes, neck cranks, should all be later. Because that way when you're rolling, you know what to expect. Somebody grabs your fingers, you're like, oh, okay, he's gonna go for a double finger lock. Uh, oh, he's got my thumb. He's got my toe. You should be able to understand and identify every single thing that somebody's attacking you with. That way you know how to get out of it. You could already identify it before you're getting caught. Five minute rolls are for patience. Two minute rolls are for attacking. So when you guys are all tired, when you're tired, they're tired. So attack, just attack. It's your heart and it's your head. What makes you attack is your head and your heart. If you're docile and shy, oh, I want to go really slow. You know what? Be brave when you're on the mat. Just start attacking. All right, let's go. All the judo guys that I train with, they all tried. They all had bets who could submit someone the fastest. I'd sit in the elevator and listen to guys taking bets. There was Gomi. There was Sakurai. Let's see, Sakurai and Luminous Sato. Three of the superstars in Shudo, the lighter weights, they're all betting on who is getting the fastest submission in the night. And it was Lumina, he would hit an arm drag and jump on the back and choke him out. He got the fastest arm bar in world history. He went boom, he snapped this guy and flying arm barred the guy. And the guy tapped out so fast, after he stood up, the guy goes, I didn't tap. So they had to go back to slow motion and watch the fight. And he goes, he tapped. He tapped in the air because his arm was going to break. It was Frank Shamrock's fighter. And it was Luminous Sato just snapped him and jumped. Look up R-U-M, Rumina Sato, flying arm bar. It's a fast, and he's a shooto guy. And I fought in shooto. So the shooto mentality is quick kill. Where do you think Coach Ben got the whole quick kill idea from? I made a quick kill video like 30 years ago. And it's all just take down to submission, like immediate. And that's a shooter mentality that you can apply to the gi. You don't, who cares if you have a gi or no gi, it doesn't matter, you attack. If you're attacking, 
Uh, not, not crazily, but if you're uh, super aggressive, you're going to start finishing people. I had a guy that I brought from England. He came in, he trained with me for years. He was a black belt in judo, brought him to the Machados, and he was just attacking everybody. And I asked one of the guys, I go, who's the toughest guy at the Machados right now? He goes, Scott Goddard. And I go, really? Scott's the toughest? And he goes, yeah, he, he attacks everybody. He arm bars everybody. Because he was just an attacker. As soon as he'd hit the ground, he's getting going for arm bars. Most guys were not good at, because they went really slow. They weren't, they weren't good at guys attacking fast. So that's why, how do you get good at attacking fast? You have to perfect your technique. You can't just do it twice and think you got a great technique. You gotta hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it. And hit it. Why do you think all of you are expert nose pickers? Because you've done it a million times. It's, it's true. Anything you do a million times, you're gonna be great at. So whatever, you, whatever your go-to is, maybe you wanna be an arm bar specialist, you start attacking arms. All you do is attack arms. Take a month and attack arms. And what do you do? For one month, don't do anything but arm bars. And see how your game changes. Okay, this month, all I'm gonna do, don't tell anybody, all I'm gonna do is attack chokes, top and bottom. I'm not just choking everybody. I think a choke is harder to get than a neck crank. Neck cranks are easy. I used to neck crank people all the time, I get in trouble. Hey, we don't do that, you're hurting everyone's necks. Oh yeah, they're like, you should choke everybody. So you gotta decide, are you gonna hunt arms, are you gonna hunt legs, are you gonna take what you can get? What is your game? Am I gonna set you up? The highest level of a grappler is someone that takes things. <clears throat> they go, guess what, I'm gonna arm bar you. You ready, go, and they arm bar you. Okay, you can also set people up to give you stuff. But the, the highest level grappler is the one that can actually tell you what he's gonna do and then he takes it from you. That's the highest grappler. All right, here we go. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. And hit the little bell for notifications if you like the video, this one, and more like it.